Welcome back. We are here at Science Central located in downtown Fort Wayne and I am here with Martin Fisher who is the executive director and we are going to go on a tour. Fantastic. My favorite place right here. Yes. Okay. So what, what are we starting with? Yeah. Why don't we start with this exhibit? This is our mm -hmm. very famous hot air balloon. Mm -hmm. It's one of our original exhibits from when Science Central opened in 1995. Mm -hmm. Now it's not the same balloon. We replace it about once a year, mm -hmm. but it's a great exhibit to talk about heat buoyancy and density. Okay. It fills with hot air, goes up, uh -huh. cools down, and comes back down again. All right, awesome. And by just pressing this button. Yeah, now it takes a little while. If you look at the reading down at the bottom, mm -hmm. you'll eventually hear the motor go on. You'll see that number start to go up, and that's because the heater will have engaged. Oh, did you hear it? Yes. I just heard it turn like a on. Furnace. And look at that. The numbers are already increasing. It's going to go up over 100 degrees from mm -hmm. where it started. And as you take a look at the balloon, you'll see it is slowly filling. Hot air is going inside. Mm -hmm. Warm air is more buoyant than cooler air. It's less dense than cooler air. Mm -hmm. So the balloon expands, and eventually, it will start to rise. It'll go start all the way rise. up to the ceiling. Really? Once it's up there, the hot air will come out from the bottom. Mm -hmm. The balloon will start to get cooler. As it gets cooler, it becomes less buoyant uh -huh. and it will settle back down again. And we can just keep doing that over and over and over yes. until we close today. Right. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Let's keep going. Sure. So the next area we're going to go mm -hmm. to is one of our natural science areas. Mm -hmm. This is about as low tech as it gets compared to the other parts of Science right. Central. We have fossils, pine cones, shells, mm -hmm. and lots of live animals. We have mm -hmm. insects such as our very popular Madagascar oh, hissing cockroach look at colony. That. Mm -hmm. These animals are just one type of insect, mm -hmm. one type of cockroach, and they're called Madagascar hissing cockroaches because naturally they're found in Madagascar, an island off the coast of Africa, hissing because they have holes called spiracles along their bodies. Uh -huh. And if it thinks I'm a predator that's going to come along and chomp on it, it'll squeeze its body together, force out air, and it makes a hissing sound. Oh, fascinating. Surrounding us right now, we have a variety of different reptiles, uh -huh. some lizards. Right behind us, we've got our very popular iguana. Yes. I'm not sure where he is right now. This it's is Dr. a big Banner. cage. I feel like a big yeah. snake would live here. And <laughs> but the, you say it, it's an iguana. Oh, he's in here somewhere. Oh, there he is, right yeah. behind the plant. Oh, that is huge. Yeah, take a look Whoa. down there. Look at that, baby. That Iguanas is are fantastic representatives for mm -hmm. us to be able to teach about reptiles, everything from their ecology and their behaviors. Mm -hmm. We'll go around the corner this way, mm -hmm. and I'll show to you our early, early learners area, oh, which is cute. called Kids Central. This is an area specifically designed for kids ages seven and younger. Mm -hmm. So it's a great place for parents to mm -hmm. come, caregivers to bring their students, uh -huh. teachers who have maybe young ones in their class. Mm -hmm. Very popular area. And we're constantly changing out the exhibits there, just as we do in the rest of the center. In the rest of it, love it. All right. All right, where are we at now? This is our very popular and brand new Gears exhibit. We just installed it this summer. Oh. It's a series of magnets, mm -hmm. a series of different shaped and sized gears, and the visitors can put them together any way they wish. I probably have some more in the box right beside wow. me. You can slide them anywhere you want. And I have seen some of the most elaborate designs here. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they work like that, nice. and sometimes they lock up. So visitors get to learn about how to arrange gears mm -hmm. so that they're successful getting motion from point A to point B. Balance, yeah. So I find this station to be really cool, um, the generation station, because really you have unique appliances and old items that this shows the technique of using your own personal strength to kind of rev up the electricity. It does. The visitor becomes the generator by mm -hmm. cranking down on that handle and by moving these items from one slot yeah. to another. They can make different components light up. What's funny is a lot of these items, young kids, they don't know what they are. Right. They, they, for example, <laughs> a 
what's that? <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay. It gives the parents an opportunity to say, yeah, when I was a Back kid, that, that's how we were listening to the Cubbies. <laughs> that is great. Too cool. Okay, I have to do the power drill. Okay. Just have to do it. Good luck. <laughs> faster, faster. There we go, there we go. <laughs> This is a great exhibit for visitors, young visitors, to burn off some en energy. And to test your strength. <laughs> yeah, and your patience. <laughs> right. Since we are in an original coal burning power plant from right. 1929 to 1975, we wow. still have some of the original equipment that was here when this was the building producing electricity for the city of Fort Wayne. That's really cool. Really cool. Okay, so now we're kind of moving into a different area that has unique little stations. Space-related ones. Yes. Yeah. If you take a look through that window, that door, you'll be able to see our very successful, <gasps> very popular Science on a Sphere exhibit. It's a six-foot hollow sphere. It weighs roughly 50 pounds. Mm -hmm. It's suspended by three wires that are in the ceiling. And because of the lighting that we have in this room, it looks like it's floating. It's right. not. This isn't magic. This it's isn't not 3D. Floating? This is just science and technology. Oh. What's going on is we have four movies. If you take a look at the wall, there are two projectors on this wall, two projectors behind us. Those projectors overlap, and the image will change in a moment. But the it, ball is 3D? It is not moving. What you're looking at are four separate movies. Okay. And because the movies are synced through a very mm -hmm. elaborate computer system, it looks like the sphere is moving. Mm -hmm. But what you're really looking at are just four movies in unison. Okay, so we walked into this little cave room. Yeah, pretty wild, huh? Mm -hmm. This is a digital giant kaleidoscope. I mean, everyone's familiar okay, yeah. with kaleidoscopes. Mm -hmm. You take the tube, you look through it, you move it, and those little beads and pieces of mirror yes. move around. Well, this is a digital system, so all of these pieces of plastic, visitors can arrange them in any pattern they want. Somebody was having fun making a checkerboard <laughs> pattern. We have more of the pieces over mm -hmm. here. Plop them down and camera system will image where those pieces are. Okay. Send that imagery to a computer system. The computer system then projects onto the screen. And you can see it is just a screen projection. Right. So we're getting this wild digital projection of a kaleidoscope pattern. Oh. Pretty wild, huh? Yes, Technology awesome. at its finest. One of the things that I like about this exhibit is it shows that merge between science, technology, and art. And art, Pretty yes. cool. Okay, so we're in front of another dark room. So what happens here? All right, so a moment ago we saw that science, technology, art connection for an exhibit. Same thing in here. Check this out. Once I walk in, a camera system is going to pick up my image convert it into a pattern. Oh. There are about 20 different patterns that it's gonna cycle through, and you can see it's on delay. By the way, it works better if you use sound effects. <laughs> Very good, well done, well done. All right, so here's what's going on. Down in the front, you'll see those weird looking red lights. Mm -hmm. It's an infrared camera that is measuring where you are and the outline of your body, mm -hmm. the silhouette of your body against this wall, which is a reflective surface. Mm -hmm. Your outline so reflects cool. back to the camera, mm -hmm. to a computer system, to a projector system that's up above us right now, projects the images onto the screen, and we see that pattern of motion and delay. All right, let's do the sound effects again. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. I love it. Love I love it. it. All 
right, look at this fabulous dinosaur. Fossil. So close, so close. Yeah. It's actually much younger than the dinosaur. This okay. is known as a mastodon, <laughs> since we're in mastodon country these days. This is a cast, one of two that was made of the largest, most complete mastodon found in the state of Indiana. And really? it was found just north of Fort Wayne. It's known as the Bushing Mastodon. It's also fascinating, one of the most researched mastodons of all the mastodons that have been found in the United States. It this, was is a, a, this is a real size? Real size, wow. actual size of a full-grown bull male mastodon. The actual specimen is down in Indianapolis. The other cast is in the collection of the University of Michigan, who's analyzing it. Uh -huh. And we had this professionally made, mm -hmm. mounted, articulated onto that steel frame that you can see on yeah. the inside. So people can get a really good view of the size, but of course, in Science Central style, mm -hmm. we've added a few extra things. Okay. So for example, kids or very brave adults mm -hmm. can climb through the tunnel <laughs> there, the tunnel there, pop up into this viewing area oh. to look right up into the rib cage. Okay. And of course, we've added interactives mm -hmm. to explain what is a mastodon? Right. What other animals were alive 10, 12,000 years ago during the last ice age? What is the size of me compared to a mastodon? So here's a, you know, a cast of a foot. Wow, it's big. Okay, I get it. So using interactives, yes. a science center can make the bones come alive and tell a story. Now, Martin, I know there's so many things here at Science Central. We've we seen a fraction. Get, I know, we can't get to all of it, but let's close it out with something fun. Sure. I'll be honest. This is as low tech as it gets, <laughs> but it's one of my favorite exhibits. It's an echo tube. All right, so right now we're in this huge open space, and if I clap my hands, we can hear an echo. It's kind of muffled, kind of dead, kind of boring, but if I clap inside of this echo tube, here's what happens. That sound goes all the way up the tube, about three, four stories up to the corner of the building, mm -hmm. reflects off the wall, and comes back down to us. Now, even though this sounds like one sound, yeah. it's actually a mix of high-pitched sounds with short wavelengths that move really fast, mm -hmm. and deeper pitch sounds with a larger wavelength that move slower. So when I clap my hands into this tube, the single sound goes up, reflects, comes down, but it spreads out the high pitch sounds from the low pitch sounds. And what it'll sound like is meow, meow. I Whoa. love this exhibit, one of my favorites. <laughs> now, can you holler in it? You can, certainly. Woo! -hoo! <laughs> We're here at Science Central. Whoa, you can even sing. <laughs> I'm impressed. I love it. Well, thank you so much, My pleasure. Martin. We appreciate it. My pleasure. <laughs> and if you would like more information about Science Central, we'll have their website listed below. Come on out and have fun on your own. We'll be right back.